i can talk about myself so as as a responsible community uh we discourage a lot of things you know we discourage playing a lot of games at a stretch we discourage uh you know a lot of gamers to do not to do certain things which is it does not which which could possibly spoil them in the future in fact you know uh we ran a april fool campaign very recently wherein we talked about toxicity in gaming you know uh as children uh, you know these people do abuse to get angry very fast they show emotions negative positive and end up in fights so we see a lot of toxicity in the gaming and we took it as an opportunity to talk about it and what are the better ways to do to it on april fool so we ran a campaign called nhk which is called nahi ho raha kya so this is a common phrase you know if you're playing very bad and people shout in the chat chat nahi ho raha kya and so on you know they will break your the pc and so on and so forth for members to join in meanwhile sure, sure. please set the agenda uh, welcome to the blue circle it's such a big privilege and pleasure to connect with everyone and our distinguished keynote speaker who is hand picked because of the think input and the rich experience he brings in thank you also to our uh, distinguished audience for joining us most of whom are ceo cxos and senior leaders many of them are our members and our repeat visitors to our webinars this is very encouraging and motivates us to provide even higher levels of dialogue to the online world as well for those of you who are new with us today blue circle is the world's first sector specific networking app for business leaders that's built in india we currently focus on 20 sector communities such as e mobility renewable energy it healthcare and many more we also present socio economic insights insights which ultimately determine the evolving complexion of the market along with our weekly webinar series and our digital pub You will be happy to know that we have recently launched the first version of the Blue Circle app for leaders, somewhat like the sector-specific LinkedIn for senior leaders, a space to a space to have meaningful conversations, connect with over fifteen thousand plus like-minded leaders from India and across the globe, house high-quality curated content, and access business opportunities across these sectors. Those leaders among you who are interested, please join us. I will share the link to the app in the chat section. I will soon be sending our invitations to our new guests. Now, without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce today's keynote speaker, Mr. Vikas Goel, co-founder of Esports Exo. Vikas is a serial entrepreneur with over 12 years, 12 plus years of experience in media buying, digital marketing, and business strategy. Vikas, with his partners Utsav and Rohit, founded Esports Exo in 2020. Esports Exo is the biggest community of games, professional esports players, tournament organizers, and esports fans. Esports Exo Esports Exo builds a SaaS platform connecting brands and gamers by making it easy to organize esports tournaments. And for today and for today's topic, Mr. Goel will be discussing gaming as a metaverse is the new social media network. I request Mr. Goel to please begin the session. Thank you. uh thank you gautam uh for such a lovely introduction and thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to such a uh good audience thank you everybody for coming in and joining us so um you know gautam has actually given a lot of introduction about esports xo i'll start with my introduction first so you know uh, gautam has rightly said that we are one of the biggest uh, community in india which has lot of gamers uh lot of content creators and lot of uh, game publishers as well now since we talk to a lot of game publishers and tournament publishers who happens to come from uh, you know uh, a gaming background which is not very long but comes from a very recent past so whatever that i talk about today is coming from these people that i learned day in day out so 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 uh, much of my life you know has been spent in delhi i did my schooling in delhi and i did not actually have the early access to internet and computers only uh, in 1997 98 i actually first saw internet and an actual computer through a cyber cafe in munirka in delhi and uh, the first website that i actually you know opened on internet was yahoo and made a you know email id and uh, although that id still doesn't exist so i use uh, g suite and gmail but much of my internet 
life actually started post uh, 1999 when you know uh, we started browsing internet to the nearest cafe and uh, you know i've made several profiles uh, you know uh, i've made all possible email ids right from the cities to reddit mails to all those possible places and i you know mid named it very differently but post 2000 i actually started making one id everywhere so vikasification the gmail blah, blah blah and so many other places and this continued uh, you know on our code and and the other social media giants which was born maybe in the early 2000 and and you know later on we have several other internet giants so if you go and find out vikasification's i mean that is the digital private that i've you know chosen for myself so i like to sell this story that i'm a traveler although yes i am a traveler i am a reader and i've started three companies this is the third company that i've started you know and i am a very active networker on linkedin online and offline as well so this is how i you know talk to people that i meet physically and or you know on online and i network with them and there's a digital avatar in gaming which very recently i started in 2020 uh, so this whole story, how we started Esports XO, is very accidental, you know. Uh, uh, so you know, when we had this uh, small drop shipping store back in 2020, which was doing fairly well, and you know, suddenly COVID started, and there were disruptions in sales and logistics. We lost a lot of money, almost to the tune of 300k dollars, and we were stuck. And we were actually playing games. PUBG was very dominant back then in India, and uh, you know. My business partner Utsav came up to me and saw, say, boss, there's the buy, there is a you know new app which is coming and you can talk, you can have your microphone connected, you don't have to use face, uh, you know, uh, social media channels, you can exchange your numbers, you can build a community, and some people are actually making money out of this, so, which intrigued me. You know, I was I was never playing that game, but I downloaded that game PUBG back then, and you know I started connecting. I was kicked ass badly by very small kids they were calling me bro and all those stuff so you know found out that there are a lot of people out there in tier two and tier three cities who have made several profiles sometimes even five or six on a single app and they start playing so they had this common course to compete and connect with each other so which is where my gaming avatar and avatar journey started so i named myself vinashak viji uh, which is very destructive and i chose this name just to get an inside view of this you know, I started toying around with this idea of Web 3.0 and uh, 3.0. I started learning how to podcast, how to network with streamers and gamers, you know, and this journey is still going on. I'm still learning. I call myself loop, which is a common phrase uh, to address people who are new in this network and trying to get around. So these are the two different profiles. But if you look at these are same, I'm the same person in the virtual world, just trying to you know figure things out in gaming. So much of my presentation is actually a, you know, research that I'm trying to do for myself or my company, where I'm trying to understand how to use metaverse in this, this gaming as a metaverse for an actual growth in the future. What are the things that eSports XO can do with this? And much of my understanding is actually a research work which I'm still doing. I would love to hear more from you later on. So, uh, so my observation actually starts from 2000, early 2000s when I actually first got a computer in my college days and, uh, you know, we can surf anything, although the internet speeds were very bad. I studied, uh, you know, BBA in Dehradun and the, the kind of internet they had was very, very, very slow. And, uh, you know, I was hooked to internet because of two things. I wanted to check emails, which nobody was sending me. And I wanted to see a lot of information, which is there on Google, maybe lesser, but, you know, uh, anything that, you know, comes to my mind, I would start searching. And, uh, you know, much of that transition from 95 to until 2004, 2005, you know, a lot of website came and went and, you know, what they essentially were trying to create is they were trying to create a lot of content, put it there on the website for people to read. So that is one of the things which I would, you know, understand as web 1.0, when people can actually come onto the website, type in, type in a URL, come to the website and read the information that you had to say. So there's nothing much you can do about it. You can either comment on it or you can share it if you want to. Uh, but there was no way for you to interact with that information. Post 2004, uh, all thanks to, you know, Orkuts, which were building up and it was a very famous social network. You know, Facebook took over and they started uh, a disruptive industry wherein you can share pictures, videos in a much better fashion. 
we can create hyper local communities we can connect with anybody outside your circle find your interests figure out people uh, all the networks and you can contribute by writing post or sharing whatever content that you had so you, they give you an opportunity to read and write and that kind of transform the the internet industry for that matter and which to change a lot of dynamics uh, you know because much of the content that you know users were creating which is also called as ugc users generated content were being monetized by these giants and they become billion dollar companies in a very short span of time and that's when uh, you know uh, this whole uh, you know euphoria around social media grew really big but if you see the last uh, four or five years six years there were a lot of companies people want privacy they didn't want to share the data they want to they think that every uh, you know all these tech giants that they're top 10 companies in the world are controlling the internet and uh, there is a only way, very less they can actually do about this so this whole uh, you know web 3.0 you know revolution actually started there when people you know wanted their data to be secured plus also they wanted to own a certain piece of income if they could from the you know people who are monetizing this ugc and that's when you know the, all these blockchain things in came into being and now you can read you can write and plus you can own the content that you put on internet um which give you know emergence to a lot of new technologies and new kind of create uh, you know business models wherein you know uh, content that gets created in the video format or text or you know image format gets monetized because companies like you know youtube companies like telegram companies like uh, uh, tiktok companies like uh, ichingari all these people are buying these content by either having a creator program or by monetize or by trying to get those streaming uh, gamers or musicians get online and trying to engage with its users so i think i think this is a you know a big change in in the way that internet has this has existed before and i think it is revolutionary because you know when i think of all these things you know there is a separate new social media giant which is emerging which is you know gaming wherein my motivation to join the game was to make money out of this by controlling and creating those virtual rooms and there are hundreds and thousands of people who want to play uh, emerges the best players in that game category and uh, they, you can do a lot of things what you can do probably in a social media you know website for example you can create your own profile on you know facebook you can create a profile on pubg you can have a image you can upload your own image and you can select a gravatar out here you can create uh, any gravatar or should you buy if you want to buy something you can actually buy uc coins exchange it and uh, you can be a man woman anything that you want to you can keep your name anything that you want to and similar to what facebook internet uh, uh, sorry instagram and twitter does you can create those profiles and connect with each other this is your uh, you know performance as a uh, as a content producer or a person who's actively networking you will gain uh, likes dislikes or you know social reach and whatever on social media channels out here the amount of hours that you put into gaming you will earn rewards or you will get ranked and people will try to compete with you and network with you so you build your own groups in social media out here you build your own clans uh, people in the gaming industry they, they, they like to be called as clans and they make the small social groups they meet outside they exchange numbers they talk on whatsapp sometimes also social media is one of the things which is binding them together but uh, the common cause here is uh, the common objective of all of these guys is to play game and network with each other this is increasing there are over 100 uh, you know million users in india who are actually playing free fire today there are over 150 million people in india who are playing pubg today and they're, they're all you know connecting with different servers outside their local vicinity also which gives a room to a lot of uh, social discussion online and offline and uh, this uh gaming itself you know what i would like to understand is a better a metaverse in itself because you know you have your own digital existence uh you can trade you you have fans who can chat on your content you have fans who will now you can buy your nfts uh, which is non fungible tokens or digital assets you create a work you can put it online 
a uh, lot of since we are a gaming company we do talk talk to a lot of uh, you know emerging companies in nfts and blockchains who reach out to us and wanted to buy our creators and create their own nfts and you know trade them so you know which led us to believe why so many people are actually uh, behind uh, the creators that we own today which is why i want to take an example how you know team exo started and what is the relevance so Team, first of all, let me explain it to you. Team XO is so there is a game called PGMI, which is an Indian version of PUBG in India because it got banned last year. Uh, so this is an experiment that we started in 2021, wherein we wanted to have a, a competitive roster, a competitive team, which can give us easy access to the community further. And we picked up uh, four boys in the team, five boys in the team, who were playing uh, competitive gaming in uh, June, early July. And these were, you know, not very famous, not uh, a typical professional gaming player, but they were emerging stars. And, uh, you know, I heard their stories. Uh, if you see on the left-hand side, Sensei is the present captain, which is called IGL, in-game leader in gaming. And uh, he's the one uh, we contacted. And this guy uh, comes from a very, uh, you know, a remote location in uh, Almora. And uh, he was playing PUBG with his friends. Uh, it got banned, so he had nowhere to go. He started playing on a different server using a VPN. And uh, he was practicing. And when the game was launched again, he started very actively looking for you know channels to showcase his skills. So that's when he found him. So when we interviewed him and uh, and we asked him how he built his own team and his own you know capabilities and understanding of the game, he told me that he was he was playing it for about three years before the game got banned and uh, the whole setup was changed. And in the meanwhile, he was talking to a lot of people within the gaming, uh, virtual gaming lobby. He tried connecting with them over the phone, convinced them that since we're playing very good, let's let's team up. Let's team up and you know participate in a smaller contests and see how we're doing. And they met online. They even found a place to live together uh, just, just so that you have uh, enough synergy to build in and play games better. And... Um, you know, by then they had figured out that this is, you know, one of the things that they can do professionally and uh, and make money out of this. So our team, when they found out that these guys were participating in tier two contests and tier one, they wanted to pay, play in tier one, well, uh, you know, lobbies. Um, we tried, uh, you know, getting them the slots in the domestic and international competitions. And and uh, let me tell you this, that these guys have been phenomenal in the run. And when we found them, uh, we agreed to pay them a salary of about 20k per person and today these guys are making over 350k on an average salary so i've seen that transition from six months from 20k to 350k these guys have grown a lot these guys play you know uh gaming for almost like eight to nine hours in a day they hang around they have sponsors they have they you know they're also building their own academy for xo wherein they can engage more such you know emerging talents and give them a career path so this is these this this is just one story that you're seeing through me. There are hundreds of you know teams that we uh, that reach out to us on a daily basis, wanting to get online, try to get our help, and expose them to brand sponsors and whatever contests that they can play. Uh, by the way, we have one more team which is called Clash of Clans, which is also very famous. Uh, you know, the story is similar, but the game is different. So, you know. I would take this opportunity to also explain you why you know esports exo is uh, trying to you know understand how this uh, new social media is emerging and how we can use it to to our own benefit. So there, there are many gaps that we identified uh, during this whole journey of two you know long years, and we've identified that you know community is a big you know element for this whole thing, and wherein these people are not only communicating communicating virtually, but they're also communicating you know, physically. So we got them a physical space. The whole journey from end to end, right from when the person decides to play a game and to uh, to a point wherein he wants to play professionally, the whole journey is very broken. They don't know where to go, where to find such tournaments, who are the people who are organizing. Most of the time they get you know, scammed. They're also constantly looking for, you know, ways to sponsor their devices, the softwares and all the possible resources to play games better. And not all of them are actually making money. We've heard the names of Carrie Minatis or the Souls or the, the Mortals, but these are only 1% of the total Indian gaming community, which is actually trying to make money and make a career path. So Esports Exo has actually trying to you know, bet on the future by you know, building the tech structure wherein 
eventually you know all the physical assets that we're building now will eventually be in a, be a metaverse wherein you know when you walk into the metaverse which is which is the actual gaming house bootcamp you will see our players sitting playing games which also opens a lot of opportunity for the fans and brands and so many other game publishers to advertise to engage and uh, you know while doing all this we are also trying to see how can we you know make it more fruitful for these gamers to actually find us and you know use uh, you know whatever knowledge that we've built in the past two years we're trying to put this all online in carefully curated courses which can be run by you know famous players who are with us right now so we are also trying to define their journey so not all of the players will end up uh, becoming a professional player some of them would try to you know get into back end they they'll become engineers and start coding and make better games or you know meta production assets or they you know become technicians or shortcuts and so many other creative stuff that you can do so we're also trying to create that infrastructure for them to you know use the knowledge that we've gained from the gamers as well as from the actual gamers so these are the things that we are trying to do and trying to do it virtually so that we reach out to tier 2 and tier 3 cities better and uh, all thanks to the indian intel density it is helping us and we focus on the mobile much but you know we, we we can imagine the kind of you know abundance that we can see in the future so we also started working on the pc games as well and uh, which which can support this kind of a very advanced uh, you know uh, design or you know uh, a metaverse so to call the virtual world so these are all the things that i want to talk about thank you so much for being a such a patient listener i would love to answer questions or discuss anything that you want to post thank you thank you thank you so much so we have received currently one question but uh, you know before i want before i get into that i had one question of my own uh, so it was about the health issues and usage of putting on a vr headset uh, essentially metaverse it's either through a desktop or the uh, vr headset so before i ask the question i just if you just allow me to set some context sure uh, regarding today's topic uh, gaming as a metaverse the new social media networking sound very intriguing so i did a little research around this and they said that 16 to 24 year olds spend about 3 hours a day on social media now a recent study uh, done by researchers at leeds university found that just 20 minutes of exposure to vr could affect the ability of some children to discern the distance to objects which could accelerate the global epidemic of myopia short sightedness if you if you say so so what are manufacturing manufacturers of vr headsets doing to solve this problem if if you do have any uh, solution to this or if you thought of it i would like to hear that from you so talk about uh, talking about the health uh, you know specifically for the vr uh, you know variables i think it's too nascent uh, we work with over 600 gamers <laughs> and none of them has this uh, vr you know headset they're talking about they're still very new only very very rich gamers actually have it these days and to be able to play with those headset in fact you don't have enough you know games that you can play around with this so i think uh, it's pretty new uh, but you rightly said you know uh, there is a lot of stress on the eyes there's a lot of stress on the mind there's a lot of physical uh, you know uh, uh you know exhaustion that we see the players with so what we do usually do with our players is we give them, we force them to take breaks uh we do not allow them to play for more than 3 hours at a stretch in fact the whole indian gaming gaming community which is which runs in the background they meet every monday and they have decided to call it off on monday so there is a you know whole uh, professional professionally driven indian gaming community that i can say have grown as people because you know you'll have to appreciate this fact that this is still very new and you know, the kind of uh, 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 surge or the euphoria around esports has only started after 2020 you know yes people were playing games uh, yes people were participating in contests but the amount of people that you see participating on those contests today is at least 20 30 times bigger than what uh, what we knew in 2020 so there's still a lot of people you know we do speak with people like nvidia we do speak with people like amds and um, and i'm sure there's uh, you know figuring it out how to you know make it less exhausting for the players but uh, something that you know i personally haven't used so far 
uh, there is one uh, you know gaming arena in mumbai which called zero latency i would like to visit that because yeah, they right. this kind of a uh, 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 a lobby wherein you can actually use that variables and play the games um but again what one thing i want to point out when i was fundraising for esports so i went to all corners of india in fact went to cities like surat and i spoke to very uh, uh, mature people in this discussion who uh, who actually don't understand how this gaming works and i was i sat on uh, with them for almost like 4 hours and and one thing they <laughs> told me in the beginning ki yaar tumhare bacche bigad rahe ho so i had to explain them to <laughs> explain this to them that you know it's not entirely true you know if you look at how uh, we've grown i i i i'm i'm 35 i was 37 year old and i've i've played cricket uh, you know for good 10 15 years i was playing outside i did not have the first mobile that i bought was in 2006 so i've never used that kind of a resource before but the gen z the people who were born after 20, uh, 1998 and 2001 probably he doesn't like cricket much he doesn't play cricket much he doesn't play soccer much these guys are hooked to internet these guys are hooked to you know their phones and they're playing uh, you know uh, probably you know call of duty or pubg on this and they're likely to follow this so yes there will be advancements on the technology side but not much of the behavioral change we'll see so even if you try to tell them boss ye aise aake kharab ho gaya please don't do that please don't wear these things they will still do it and this this thing happened with us also right i used to watch a lot of tv my mother is yeah. telling me yaar bahut zyada tv dekh raha hai i used to watch it stretch for 12 hours stay on the air etc <laughs> yeah so it has happened with everybody and uh, at some point in time but we also figured out now we see plasma tv ye tv and so many other things that has come up which is reduced but you know over the time period i'm also trying to uh, i also believe that uh, you know people will have uh, a certain uh, you know benchmarks and rules and regulations for example pgmi sends this messaging every 2 hours that you need to stop gaming there is an auto play message there a lot of you know uh, you know violence which was there in pubg which probably indian government did not want to you know portray and now they've seen many elements in the game so this will come the cultural and the advancement on the technological side will definitely happen so yeah we, i mean i mean china had done a similar step where the government came in between and they said that if your kids are under 18 and they play after a certain point, number of hours i think we'll they'll take strict actions and they'll be jailed the parents will be jailed so it's i i guess some form of strict actions is required not to the extent of what china is doing <laughs> i must tell you this uh, uh, you cannot sign up and play bgm if you're below 18 uh, but i oh. know from my experience that you know uh, a lot of kids are still playing it and we try to validate by every step we get hundreds and thousands of registration day on day we try to limit them but they still you know find a way to overcome that so the people who are playing in the, you know games these days are they come from uh, you know right from 14 to 16 to sometimes even 32 so there is a very diverse backgrounds that we come from we're trying to build that you know tech stack wherein we are we are trying to learn more about the audience we're building our own data data lakes in the background so probably in the next two years we'll see more data coming in i mean indians are also known for jugaad so they're always find a <laughs> find a loophole in something or the other <laughs> they will they will yeah. absolutely so now i'll move on to the q and a section uh, first question coming from rakesh malik saying what is the role of nfts in gaming metaverse how will it help enterprises and investors in the long run if you have a view on this we need to hear uh, i have a very uh, you know uh, unfurnished view on this so actually we are one of them who are trying to understand how nfts work and one of the uh, things that i could understand and i can explain it to you from the gaming perspective is the token set we want to launch uh, through teamxo because teamxo is very famous wherein we get a lot of requests uh, from the fan community that you know isko khilao let this guy play don't participate in this contest ye jersey ta kharab kyu hai why do you do this blah 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 and so many so so and so forth so what we realized is we want to test it by issuing 100 tokens to the top fans and top uh, you know followers of team x and see how they you know interact with it so they have some contribution in what team x or does if it does well probably we'll try to convert it into you know something valuable for the gamers and list it on the open platform where it can be traded 
And one of the ways to do it is launching the fungible tokens or some artwork, or let's say by Sensei. And if when Sensei issues it and you know it gets traded or listed on let's say you know OpenSea or for 0.1 Ethereum, okay, so it has some value. If somebody wants something from let's say Sensei, he better have this token. And if let's say Gotham decides to meet you know Sensei, and he wants uh, you know Sensei will only meet somebody who has this token with him. So Gotham must buy that by either paying 10x or paying 100x. So this is where Sensei is making money. This is where the fan is also happy that he has uh, certain access to, which is basically the fundamentals of the utility that I'm creating. So this is what we plan to do. And uh, I'm, I'm a, we are at least uh, you know, 10 or 11 months away from what we want to do with this. So this is a very nascent thing that I'm talking about, right? So this is how most of the esports companies will plan to do eventually. So it becomes like a revenue sharing model between the platform which you're providing and the influencer like Sensei, as you were saying. Yeah. Cool. So I'll go to the next question. I think it's about TMXO. Uh, TMXO, just for my understanding, is a BJ of my team. Uh, looks like you're a fan. So TMXO is, uh, we plan to extend it to maybe different geographies also. Uh, so one of the investors is very keen on you know building TMXO. They want us to invest more. Uh, so we've spoken to many international domestic rosters in different game categories, because this is where we get a uh, very, very in-depth reach in the Indian gaming community. We learn a lot about them. And through this, we figured out a way to make money in the future. So, uh, uh, so Team Expo is definitely on our cards. We would like to you know, spend more time on Team Expo. But for now, uh, we stick to the present rosters and we'd like to continue for another six to seven months with this. Awesome. So coming from a, a question from Dipankar, he's asking what will be the, a decent metaverse configuration for use at home at affordable cost? Oh, uh, I, I, I also bought a PC and uh, you know, to be honest, uh, to play a game, uh, the average cost will be close to 1.5 to 1.8 lakh rupees. And uh, to be able to run this kind of a configuration, you need a very, very strong internet and a very good monitor. So I would suggest invest well in the, uh, the visuality of it. So I bought an LG uh, monitor very recently. I'm still to connect with it, uh, but this is the average cost. And uh, you know, I go by LG and, uh, and there, there is one guy in the office who does this cost, uh, all hardware shit. So I stay out of this, but you know, I, I can let you know, by the way, I can check with them and come back to you again. So, Rane has a question, how do brands become popular? Okay, interesting question. There are many things that we are doing, which is valuable for the brands. One of them is, uh, since we're very famous uh, in the Indian gaming community, we get a lot of attention from gamers themselves. Uh, and these are the gamers who are streaming at least uh, you know 10 hours a day or six to 10 hours a day. And brands want that attention from these gamers and they, they either want them, if they're a streaming channel, they want them to stream on their channels. If they are, uh, uh, let's say, internet uh, consumer brand, they want them to be featured on those streams. So these are two of the things that we are doing presently. Other than that, we are also trying to work with these uh, very famous fans to create uh, gaming IPs. So for example, you know, uh, one of the very large uh, media brands in India, one of the largest, uh, they're trying to create an IPL kind of a format wherein teams can be bought, teams can be sold. Uh, it's less, it runs like a franchise program, wherein they'll select uh, different games in different categories and create teams and sell it. And uh, they plan to make money by either sponsorships or you know, team wins, similar to what IPL does. So this, this is on the cards. Thank you. Uh, I think that was fairly uh, detailed. I think that was a good answer. Thank you so much. Next question is, is it, is it the responsibility of the parent to control their child from how much they play video games? Or is there something that game developers or consoles themselves do not do, could do to moderate the same? See, I can talk about myself. So as, as a responsible community, uh, we discourage a lot of things, you know, we discourage playing a lot of games at a stretch. We discourage uh you know a lot of gamers to do not to do certain things which is it does not which which could possibly spoil them in the future in fact you know uh 
we ran a April Fool campaign very recently, wherein we talked about toxicity in gaming. You know, uh, as children, uh, you know, these people do abuse, do get angry very fast. They show emotions, negative, positive, and end up in fights. So we see a lot of toxicity in the gaming, and we took it as an opportunity to talk about it. And what are the better ways to do to it on April Fool? So we ran a campaign called NHK, which is called Nahi Hora Kya. So this is a common phrase. You know, if you're playing very bad, and people shout in the chat, chat Nahi Hora Kya, and so on. You know, they would break you know, their PCs and so on and so forth. So we ran this campaign, and we launched a drink, which is called NHK. So if you drink that, your toxicity will reduce. And people bought that idea, including our investors. And they called us and they asked, "Why are you launching this? What is the fundamental?" So on and so forth. And we kept quiet for three days. And when we revealed this, and you know, people, we actually saw comments uh, thanking us that you're launching this thing, and they really believe this toxicity is very, very, you know, uh, bad for the Indian gaming industry. People had discussions in our chat. So I realized this, you know, that, you know, if you pick up a cause, put it in a proper fashion, put it in the community in a better way, people do understand it. And uh, in fact, we are doing something with this NHK in the future. We'll talk about it in the next call. But, uh, you know, these are the causes we we take chances to talk about it. And uh, we will continue to do that. Surely. So I'll quickly move on to the next question. Uh, how metaverse interoperability will bring in more real real world assets to the metaverse? So, okay, let me understand this question again, guys. So how metaverse interoperability will bring in more real world assets to the metaverse? So, um, uh, so I can talk about one you know very interesting startup that I spoke with two days back. So this guy is creating a you know city in the metaverse where he's actually selling the land. So for example, you know, uh, I'll talk about Vatika city in Gurgaon, I live there. So what if I create a Vatika city in the virtual land and the owners of the actual flat owns that piece of land in metaverse should, should they wish to. So this is the concept that he's working, which looks very fun to. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to pick his brains more wherein the actual transaction is happening on the offline world and it's on blockchain, it cannot be reversed. And that itself is a validation that, you know, people are finding use different use cases to build virtual and, you know, uh, real world uh, uh, differences look very unreal. So it's very amusing to think of such things. I, I had not seen this before, but once I saw that, you know, uh, you know I asked him one question, how can I be a part of this? How can I help you? What are the things that we can do together? So yes, that's possible, but it remains to be seen. A lot of people are doing a lot of things, but still, still a lot of ground has to be covered. Thank you. I'll move on to the last question. I know we're overshot a little bit, but just finishing it. How are um, gamers sharing their avatars information in physical world? Also, is there a common location or directory for these gamers? So the common directory, I'll answer the second part. The common directory and the location will be <laughs> Esports Expo. We're building the platform. You can come and we can let you know this. This is what we are here for. And for sharing the information, most of these people uh, are very much hooked to uh, streaming channels, uh, YouTube, Loco, Twitch, and they use a lot of Instagram. This is my uh, opinion. This is what I think they do. And uh, you know, uh, they become less. They become less uh, uh, active on uh, social networks like Facebook and uh, you know other traditional media giants. So, catch hold of them. I think Instagram and YouTube would be a good start. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Goel. Uh, such an insightful and engaging session, and a privilege to hear you. Our guests and I have been hooked on till the end, and I've taken off several nuggets. And uh, thank you to our leaders in the audience for joining us and for staying till the end and for always sharing excellent questions. Thank you so much, Gautam, for inviting me. Happy to be you. in touch with you. Thanks. For sure, for sure. All right. All right. Have a good Bye. day. Bye, everybody. Thanks.